This review has been made possible by Toyota of Naperville. As you know, Toyota has tons of brand new Toyotas available for purchase, but did you know that they also have a remarkable selection of used cars? Head on over to toyotaofnaperville.com and look through hundreds of used cars for sale right now. Alright, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 2013 Jeep Wrangler. Up front is a 3.6 liter V6 and down below is a 6 speed automatic transmission. If you'd like to read more of my thoughts, head on over to carmarshall.com slash overdrive. But before we get into the actual core review itself, I'm sure long time viewers of the channel will notice the camera angle is very, very weird for this video. It's actually the camera's off to my left instead of off to my right and the reason for that is that i did not anticipate this being an issue but the jeep wrangler's windshield is so flat so 90 degrees that my camera mount actually only really bends enough this way to get a level shot otherwise if i would have put the camera in the exact middle the view would have been skewed like that and no one wants to see a video that's tilted for longer than a minute so that is why the camera is off to the left but let's get back to that 3.6 liter v6 now it's exactly what chrysler jeep and dodge put in just about everything it does the job it does the job well it has enough power but i was actually talking to my friend yesterday about this it's a little sad that every single jeep across the board at least in this body style every single jeep across the board got the same exact engine same exact power they never actually offered a bigger power engine which is sad. I really wish that they at least put a V8 in a couple of them or maybe a, a higher output V6, but they all got the same treatment. We're going to do a launch in the Jeep. I'm not going to plus minus it myself. Here we go. The 3.6 liter actually revs decently high. It actually revs to 6,000 RPM. But I think I'm saying that because it took a while to get there. As you guys saw, that whole pull was actually just first gear and first gear alone. So it has tall gears. It's going to take a while to hit red line, but that's kind of not the point of the Jeep. Like I said, down below is an automatic transmission. I know some people get up in arms about an automatic Jeep. People also get up in arms about a four-door Jeep, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. I actually don't mind it. I actually kind of like the automatic transmission. It doesn't bother me. I know some people prefer a manual off-road, but let's be honest, most Jeeps nowadays don't actually get off-roaded. And last but not least, the Jeep Wrangler is four-wheel drive, which is selectable on a lever down below, and we'll talk about that in a second. So let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have four gauges. On the far left is my fuel, then I have my speed, then on the right is my tachometer, and on the far right is my coolant temperature. On the steering wheel, I get my voice controls, phone, a compass button, which is interesting. Actually, when I hit that, it pops up a little compass underneath the speedometer. Then on the right, I just have my cruise control settings. On the back of the steering wheel, you do get volume controls, which is really nice. So when you're driving, you don't have to take your hands off the wheel. To the left, I actually don't really have anything. I have door locks and that's it. And I'll explain that in a second. In the middle, I do get a radio. This is a very, very, very basic radio. It doesn't even have a screen, which for 2013 is slightly behind the times, but Jeeps are rugged. They're really not meant to have creature comforts. They're meant to off-road and be good at that and they are they're really good off-road down below the radio this is actually where you'll find your window switches so because the doors are actually removable the window switches are here in the middle they are power windows when you do remove the doors you just unplug a, a plug essentially a power plug and you can take the doors off so you do have power windows which is really nice and they are auto so one touch down they are not one touch back up though down below the window switches, you get your climate control options. Now, Jeeps have absolutely awesome climate controls because when you have that top off, you do need the climate controls to work. Then we have a couple of interesting buttons. We have traction control off and hill descent control. Now, hill descent control is when you're coming down a hill, you can turn this on and the car will 
regulate its speed when going down a hill so you can focus on not falling into a rut or you could focus on not hitting a tree stuff like that i like this feature a lot some people say oh you know it's not manual you know back in my day we you know we were the hill descent control and like yeah i get it but we have the technology might as well use it then we do have a 12 volt charger now what I really like about this is that for the 12 volt charger, it actually has a picture of a key on it. Now this means that it'll only charge when the ignition is actually on. So when you turn the car off, it will stop charging. I like this a lot. Chrysler is really good at doing this. Chrysler owns Jeep. It will either have a picture of a key or a picture of a battery. And so you know which is which. So you either don't leave something plugged in so it'll drain your battery. Or if you want something to charge while the car's off, you know where to put your charger. That's really handy and I really like that. Then we come down to the shifter, nothing too crazy here. Very, very standard Chrysler shifter. That is nothing special at all. Although I can plus minus it, I guess, which is kind of neat. Then we have the four wheel drive lever. So you pull that back if you want to put it into four high, four low, or keep it in two wheel drive. Then we have two cup holders. Now the seats, I have actually never seen this in a Wrangler before. We have red seats in a Wrangler, which is pretty neat. I actually like the red seats a lot. So after filming, it was actually brought to my attention that these are not stock Wrangler red seats. Now some trims did come with red seats. They're very, very rare, but they have something embroidered on the back of the seats. These are actually custom red seats. These are not factory. And unfortunately I did not know that at the time of filming. I think they look great. They are actually decently comfortable and they are leather so you can wash them off if you do get them muddy. It's not that big of a deal, but this is a four door. So we do have a back seat and we'll do a back seat review. All right, so we are in the back of the Jeep Wrangler Unlimited. And honestly, the seats are pretty comfortable. The red leather carries on back here. I really like that. I don't think this back seat was used all that much because the leather is still kind of slippery, which is kind of funny. Down below here, I do have my window switches. It's a little echoey because this is like essentially plastic, but this whole panel comes off. Like I mentioned earlier, you can see the roll bar back here. And overall, riding in the back of a Jeep with the top off is a very, very fun experience. It's really cool, it's really fun. I remember back in high school, we had this game called Assassins, and basically everyone was assigned someone else in the grade, and you had to squirt them with a water gun when they didn't expect it. Couldn't be on school property, couldn't be um, at their place of work, and I think it couldn't be at the church or whatever but there was a group of kids who had a Jeep and they had squirt guns in the back of the Jeep and they had the top off, doors off, and so they just pull up next to you and spray you. And so that was pretty funny, but it's definitely cool back here. I have huge speakers up in the roll bar. No center console, I do have two couples down there. Pretty basic back seat. Uh, it's a decently comfortable back seat. It's very angular. The back is sort of at 90 degrees, but other than that, it's very fun to ride in a Jeep. I would much rather ride in a Jeep than drive a Jeep honestly. So let's talk about the Jeep itself. There's actually a lot more to talk about. First of all, like I hinted at earlier and was mentioning earlier, you can fully remove all four doors. It's a couple of bolts. You really just need an Allen key and you can get all four doors off. I'm sure you guys have seen this, but it actually goes further than that. The windshield you can actually take off. You could fold down. That's why those two little bump stops are on the hood. That's so you can actually fold down the windshield. The top comes off, but it actually comes off in a slightly interesting way. So these two panels up above me actually come off on their own. So if you don't want to take the back off, you could actually just take either one or both panels out for a, essentially a large sunroof. But then also the black cap on the back, that entirely comes off. There is a somewhat roll cage. I'm sure you can see it right here. It's essentially there's a roll cage surrounding the Jeep. So you can actually take the doors off, top off, windshield off, and you're still protected. This is a very modular, modular vehicle. And by modular, I mean that you can take parts off, swap parts very, very easily. And I think that's part of the appeal is that these are very easy to modify and they're very, very good off-road. But my main talking point about the Jeep is these things are not the best to drive. These things actually suck on the road. I mean, they're really not good. This will be, I believe my 205th review. And also, I once drove a 2013 Jeep Wrangler on the highway for four hours one day to go to the dunes and back. And I can honestly say this is one of the least aerodynamic, worst handling vehicles I have ever driven. 
I mean, it really feels like I'm driving a jacked up mail truck. You know what it actually handles like? When I'm actually driving it like this and when I'm going into the corners, you know what it feels like? It feels like my family's 1931 Ford Model A. That's actually what it feels like to drive this thing. Cause you're up high, you have a very high center of gravity. The steering is kind of numb and it also kind of does what it wants. Because the big chunky tires, they're gonna grip whatever they're gonna grip and it doesn't care if it's the right or wrong way. It's sluggish, but these things are some of the most capable off-road vehicles I have ever seen or been in. And that goes a long way because yes, these things are not great day to day. Dailying a Jeep Wrangler, not my idea of a good time. I would never want to daily one of these. But once a week, that's Saturday, Sunday, you want to go off into the woods. If it's downpouring and you got to drive through a muddy trail for 15 miles of back roads to get to the campsite, the Jeep is going to do it. The Jeep is going to get you there. The four wheel drive system, when it's engaged is amazing. It has the ride height. These things are absolute beasts off-road. And I think that's why we put up with them. If the Jeep wasn't good off-road, I don't think many of these would sell. And I think that is a big selling point is that these are so capable. Even if, at least here in suburbia, I'm not trying to fool you guys and say that we have a bunch of off-roading spots around here. We actually don't have any off-roading spots in my hometown. And so a lot of these Jeeps are mall crawlers or really grocery getters and they don't see dirt all that much. But I think people like having that possibility that no, are they gonna drive it through the mud in their lifetime? Probably not, but they like that they're able to. And honestly, you are able to. It's all about potential energy. People love having the potential I think that's why people love supercars so much as a way to flex. Owning a Bugatti, I could go 260 miles an hour. I never will. It probably won't even break 150, but people like having that potential. And that's exactly what the Jeep Wrangler is all about. If I could boil it down to one word, if I could boil down the Jeep Wrangler to one word, it would be potential. Because this SUV, this truck, this vehicle has potential. It has the potential to go off-road. It has the potential to get you where you need to go. It has the potential to be this huge beast on 35-inch tires with a 10-inch lift. It doesn't have to be, but it could. I think the Jeep really appeals to the superego in all of us. This idea that we have that we can be better, that we can do more. Which is funny because another Chrysler product, the Durango, I compared to the id. The Durango is pissed off all of dodge's products are they're angry they're mad at something they have slanted headlights and they growl and that's the bad if you want to be a bad boy get a durango or a charger or challenger but if you want to be something better than you are if you aspire to aim higher again have that potential get a wrangler i just wish that these handled better on the road well i hope you guys enjoyed the video i hope you guys learned something about the 2013 jeep wrangler unlimited huge thank you to toyota naperville this is one of their used cars definitely go check them out if this jeep is still for sale i will leave a link to it in the description below if not look through their used cars they have hundreds of used cars they get jeeps in all the time so if this jeep is sold i'm sure they have another definitely go check them out their information is up on the screen and linked in the description below but i hope you guys enjoyed the video don't forget to rate the video comment on the video and subscribe really like to take care guys